Welcome to Artistic Adventures. We're starting a new project today, and this will be a Japanese doll project. I'm starting with making the kimono, but there was going to be several different videos. So let's get started on this making the kimono part. First of all, I'm going to make a basic pattern out of some paper towel material, and I'm just basically outlining what I think each piece should be like. This particular piece is going to be just the back, and it's it's going to just be a, a one piece back. It doesn't have a seam down the middle. Now for the fr two pieces in the front, I'm marching, matching up the shoulders with the back and then I'm curving the front part around so the side seam is straight but the front part that's going to cross over is kind of curved around. And then that's how it's going to look. That's the front part over the back part and you want that curved part to end somewhere around the doll's hips because that's where the collar should end so it will be under the uh, sash or obi and this is going to be the collar i'm just sort of eyeballing it to see how much material i'm going to need to go around from the uh, hip to hip curve that is on the front of the uh, kimono okay now I'm doing the sleeves and I've marked on the uh, on the pattern of the front and back where I want how long I want the sleeves to come down to and then now I'm going to cut off how long I want them to be and I'm cutting a little extra because I'd have I'm going to have to hem it. The um, kimonos that I've seen hang a little off the shoulder. The shoulder seam is not right at the shoulder, shoulder. And I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to do parts of this that are authentic. Some parts are just not possible. Uh, now I'm going to make, uh, just I'm measuring how long the obi needs to be. It wraps around the body twice. Uh, and then it folds back and forth twice to make the bow. So I just want to get the length of that. And then it's just going to be a straight piece of material. Now I'm making the under robe. This is sort of like, I guess, the slip. And I know it has a name, but I forgot what it was. So I'm cutting out two fronts and two sleeves. This material is doubled. And then once I get, get these cut out, I can open it up and cut out the back because that's just one single piece. All right, so now I'm cutting out the front. And you can see a little bit more what the shape is like on that. This is just a, basically a cotton, kind of a cotton material. I think it ha may have a little bit of polyester in it, but it's kind of thin, and that's one of the reasons I liked it. I was going to use that bottom decorative part for the hem, but it wouldn't have been very authentic, so I decided not to use it. Like I said, I'm trying to be a little bit authentic, but because of the size, it's really hard to do these exactly the authentic way, as far as my skills are anyway. And I'm uh, just doubling that over to make sure I have the shoulder symmetrical. And then I cut out a folded piece. That's It's already folded over, and that'll be for the collar. That way I don't have to fold it over. All right. So that's the parts for the undergarment. And now we're going to cut out the material for the kimono. And I found this really gorgeous sort of brocaded satin material. This is the right side underneath there, the green part. Um, and I love the material. It's absolutely gorgeous. It feels beautiful. But I have to say this is the most raveling material I've ever seen in my entire life. And on top of that, I was using a pair of scissors I think I've had since I was six. These Ginger scissors. And they're not very sharp. Uh, I mean, I have to admit, they've stayed, stayed sharp for quite a long time, almost 50 years. But um, I, I really was snagging the material because it's, it's so satiny and fine. And then all those little um, threads coming out just about nearly drove me crazy. So this, this project was a little bit frustrating as far as the material goes. I'm not going to get into the hair yet because that was even another disaster. All right, so now I'm cutting out the uh, collar, and I'm just doing a double length of that piece that I have, and enough that I can fold it over, and it'll be about, it's a mm, little, little over half an inch wide when you bend it over. All right, and now I just need a single layer for this 
uh, backside. And the other part of this was there were there are dragons in this design, and I wanted to make sure the dragons were upright, so I had to make sure I was um, doing that part right. That's another thing that could have gone wrong with this project. But fortunately, I did think about that part. Okay, so now I think I've got all the pieces cut out for the kimono and the undergarment. And now for the obi, I had this really beautiful piece of raw silk that's sort of a, uh, it's sort of a beigeish yellow, probably more beige than yellow, but it does have a little touch of that in it. And I thought it would be appropriate to use for the obi since it's raw silk. So I'm, I'm folding it over the amount that I think the thickness should be, and then I'm using that green ribbon that I measured to measure the length. Now, I will say, after I finished this project, I realized that that OB really was not quite long enough, probably needed to be another three inches to get two uh, doubles on the bow, but I'll show you at the end what happened. Um, I'm always learning when I'm doing these projects because I've, I've never done any of this stuff before. I'm just kind of making it up as I go. That's just how I work. <laughs> That's how I roll. Okay, so now I've turned the obi and I'm just folding in the one end that was open where I turned it. And then I'm going to sew a seam across that end to close that off. And that's our completed obi. All right, we'll put that aside for now. And I'm going to go back to the um, slip and I'm just cutting oh by the way those were my new scissors I went out and bought did you see that I flashed them up there I'm so happy with those scissors anyway I sewed the ends of the shawl and then I started to sew the rest of it and I realized that I have green thread on there and so I did sew the shoulder seams because they're not going to sew but then um, I decided to put that aside and go ahead and sew the kimono and then I'll switch over to uh, white thread and finish the underskirt Oh, I, I did sew the collar on too. So I, I lined up the middle of the neckline in the back with the middle of the collar. And then I just sewed that down. And that was the last thing I sewed with the green thread. So I'm going to get rid of that uh, piece of material now. And we'll go over to the, the kimono, which is why I put the green thread on there in the first place. Okay, so I'll show sewing the shoulder seams first. And there, that's how that looks once you sew the shoulder seams. Now I'm just sewing the ends off of the collar so I can have that turned. Now the the long edges will the long edge one of the long edges will be raw. So that's part I'm sewing the middle of the neckline to the middle of the sh the collar. I pin that and then stretch out the rest of the collar down as far as it will go and then sew that on. And the collar will stand up on this, on the kimono and on the undergarment. So after we get it made, we're going to iron it. And I'm trying to get rid of all these little things. And I did end up uh, putting some uh, stop fray on that collar because it was just going every which ways with the unraveling and uh, I did start actually doubling my my uh, hems over so they wouldn't be so unraveled so now on the sleeves I'm sewing that was just the bottom of the sleeve so I'm sewing a hem in that and then I'm sewing the edges that will eventually be sewed together, but these are the underarm seams of the sleeve. Now I'm taking the center of, of the shoulder seam, matching it up with the center of the sleeve, right sides together, and spreading that out. And then I'm going to sew about two or two and a half inches across there, not all the way to the end of the sleeve, because then we're going to open it up and sew that bottom sleeve together and that'll make the sleeve. Okay, so see I didn't sew it all the way down. The kimonos that I saw have an opening under the arm on the on the uh, the kimono so that you can reach through or a person who's wearing it could reach through and pull the sleeve of their undergarment through to to fit inside the sleeve of the kimono. 
So I'm trying to do that part authentically. So that will it, there will be an opening under under the arm. And I having to hem the side seams before I sew the side seams together so that that part that's open won't have a raw edge. So that's what I'm doing right now is hemming the side seams that will run down under the sleeve. And then once that's done, I can come in and sew my side seams together, leaving a little opening in the armpit. So I'll come down about half an inch or so and start the side seam there and then sew all the way to the bottom. Doing it that way also helped with some of the fraying, so um, that was glad about that. So there's my opening under the arm. All the sides were hemmed, but there's just that opening. I'm sure there are different ways to make kimonos. I was just doing a little research, and this is what I, I uh, came up with. I'm sure it could be much more simple. <laughs> All right, so now we've got the sleeve completely finished, and I'm going to start working on, for now, just turning over a double seam on that front part that comes down the front of the kimono underneath the collar. And that's double hemmed, turned over hemmed, since that's going to be the final thing that we do to that, and I want it to look fairly finished. So I did both of those sides, and then I want to go back and work on the sleeve for the other side of the kimono. So now I'm hemming the sleeve for the other side, and then the two ends, I'm hemming those. And those will end up being sewn together eventually. I hope this all makes sense. This is a fairly complicated little little tiny garment to make. All right, and now I'm doing the same thing, sewing that shoulder seam across the sleeve and the shoulder of the kimono body. And then we'll sew, we're going to hem that side seam that's going to go under the arm. Once we get that done, then we'll, we'll sew up the rest of the side of this kimono. And then we can get back to the, um, the undergarment to sew. Oh, we do have to hem the bottom. I forgot about that. All right. So now we're sewing the bottoms. He, oh, yeah. I keep my <laughs> sewing machine kept getting, kept having the thread come into it. That's just so annoying. I had to put a little bit more glue on a couple of places that were unraveling. Okay, so I'm finishing up the sleeve there. And once we get that finished, we can turn it. Trim off more of those things down around the bottom. And then I'm doing a double hem, fold over hem on the bottom, since that'll be the finish at the bottom. And that's pretty much it for the kimono. We're going to iron it in just a minute. And once we have the undergarment made. So I'm going back to the undergarment now that I put white thread on my little baby sewing machine. And we're going to do the exact same process. So I'm going to just speed through this instead of really explaining. It's exactly the same process. The only difference is you don't have to leave that seam, that opening under the sleeve because this undergarment is what you would wear like a slip or whatever. So it's going to be pulled through into the sleeve of the kimono, but it doesn't have to have an opening because there's going to be nothing pulled through it. So just going through basically the same process. I was really fascinated with some of the research uh, that I did while, while making or coming up with the idea to make this kimono. There are such elaborate dolls made in Japan, and there's some really good videos on YouTube if you get a chance to watch how they make some of these dolls in the traditional manner. They're fascinating. And some of their clothing in the old traditional Japanese dolls, they were made as they were in the olden time where they wore many, many layers. They didn't have just this inner layer and then the outer kimono. They had many layers and that was really a status symbol for them. So on some of those dolls you'll see that they may have, you know, five or six, I don't know how many is the most, but there were there are many, many layers, and they're all different colors, and it's really beautiful. 
that wouldn't have worked for me because it would have just made me look really round. But <laughs> they're small. I guess that's one of the benefits of them being very thin and small. So that's kind of fascinating if you get a chance to watch some of those videos on YouTube. It's it's really interesting. But now, today, what, what they're wearing is this. And then sometimes they don't even wear the undergarment. They might just wear the collar. They, they have just the collar part that shows. And you wrap that around and secure it. And then you just put the kimono over it. Because really, you don't see the undergarment other than the top of the collar. All right, so we finished our all of our garments. Now we're going to do some ironing. First, I ironed the obi or the sash. Now I'm ironing that collar in an upright position so that it'll stand up. And then just ironing all the seams to make sure they're flat and lay perfectly. And hopefully this is all going to come together. <laughs> all right, now doing the same thing to the undergarment. Gonna make sure that collar is standing up. The collar of the undergarment should show just a little bit at the at the back and the neckline, but then other than that, you might see a glimpse of it in the sleeves. So you wrap that the right the uh, left side over the right. I was uh, very interested to learn that if you do it the other way and wrap the right side over the left, that's how they dress dead people. So You'll definitely want to do that. So they use these little thin strips of ribbon or fabric to tie the undergarment around there. And the ends would just be tucked under. And you want to make sure that the hem is even in the front and the side seam is straight. Mine is, wasn't exactly, but oh well. <laughs> Such is the doll business. <laughs> Didn't go exactly right. So now I'm putting the... Um, the kimono on over that and I am trying to get that side seam straight and the, the hem straight across the bottom and now we're putting the obi around you keep that one little part up to fold down over the bow and the end you stick around then you turn it and twist it to the back so that's how the people would put it on they would do the bow in the front and then twist it around to the back so the front part would be flat and if you needed to pull up some, you might have a little um, fullness on the top part just to make your hem even. But that's okay. That's how it's supposed to be. It doesn't really lay as well for the little doll than it, than it would on a, you know, a, a human adult. <laughs> but anyway, there's our finished doll. That's the front. And there's the back. And then I did one view with the sleeve. This was a really long video, so thanks for sticking with me. It was a fairly challenging project. Next, we're going to be working <clears throat> on the face-up, and then we're going to do a wig. So as always, I hope you'll subscribe so you don't miss anything in this series. And then we're going to be working on something else exciting. Thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up, and please subscribe. Bye.